Baby boomer homelessness rates are skyrocketing, and many millennials and Gen Zers feel no sympathy for them. For years now, of course, boomers and younger generations have been locking horns over who's actually to blame for today's economy. And it's been nigh on impossible for younger generations to eke out a stable living for years. But now, it seems like the tables are turning. Boomers, as we know, have enjoyed a level of financial comfort never before seen in American history. But elderly baby boomers are now the fastest growing group among homeless people, a development not seen since the Great Depression. Why? Well, the lingering impacts of the Great Recession has left nearly half of boomers without any savings, while inflation has eroded the buying power of senior programs like Social Security and Medicare, and wage stagnation means that the jobs seniors are actually able to get to fill in the gaps don't pay anywhere near a livable wage. And this is all combined with America's absurd housing market to create a disaster. But given how punishing the economy has been for younger generations, not to mention, it must be said, many boomers' total lack of empathy about it, many millennials and Gen Zers are having trouble feeling anything but a sort of schadenfreude about the baby boomer homelessness situation. Homelessness is a harrowing and dangerous situation for anybody regardless of their age. And it's inhumane to say anybody deserves it. However, two things can be true at the same time, and this is one of those situations. Because there is an extent to which baby boomers have brought this situation on themselves. Baby boomers as a block, let me say that again, as a block, hashtag not all boomers, have time and time again voted for the politicians and policies that created our current economic crises. Be that as it may, we also can't look past the fact that those politicians spent decades lying through their teeth to make sure boomers would keep voting for those policies. And they believed what they were told, that these policies would make everyone prosperous forevermore. Good old trickle-down economics that worked just long enough to dupe them while making the political and corporate class richer than at any time in history. Just as there's an extent to which boomers are to blame for their own comeuppance, there's also an extent to which they too are victims of the political and economic systems we're all suffering under. But there is an election less than a year from now. Boomers now have an opportunity to learn from what the rest of us have had to spend our entire adult lives learning the hard way. Hopefully we can all join together next year and make the right choices because our future quite literally depends on it, including for the first time ever, the elderly boomers among us. Whoopee, 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 whoopee. Earning a reasonable living in America is becoming increasingly impossible. That's not opinion, it's statistical fact. Nevertheless, many among the older generations insist on blaming younger generations' inability to have any stability in life on laziness. Like boomer Hollywood icon Whoopi Goldberg, for instance, who recently stated on The View that millennials and Gen Z can't afford things like housing because they only want to work four hours and don't want to bust their behinds like the boomers supposedly did. Never mind that the data conclusively shows that they had it far easier than younger generations. When Goldberg's millennial co-host Alyssa Farah tried to explain all of this to her, Goldberg spat back, every generation is told you're going to do worse than your parents. Okay, but Ms. Goldberg? Millennials actually have. Why is this so hard for your generation to understand? But Goldberg's take isn't just annoying. It's completely divorced from the facts. Running through those facts in a video last week didn't seem to have any impact on most of the boomers in our comments, but let's see if it sticks this time. Since the boomer heyday of 1972, housing costs have soared 132 percent, cars 85 percent, college education 164 percent, all while wages have stagnated for decades, and while wage increases in recent years have been completely erased by inflation. But let's get to the heart of Goldberg's little diatribe. Laziness. Where are these supposedly lazy millennials and Gen Z's, Ms. Goldberg? Are they the ones that have been found in studies to actually be workaholics because more than half of them are living paycheck to paycheck? Are they part of the unprecedented 46 percent of Gen Z's and 37 percent of millennials who work multiple multiple jobs and have side hustles because they can't afford to live without them? Are those the lazy millennials and Gen Z's who only want to work four hours that you were talking about? I think you might be a little bit confused because the reason younger generations want our work lives to be reimagined is because busting your behind like the boomers did no longer provides a stable income. What's not clicking, Ms. Goldberg? Are you confused? Or are you just like so many other people who've made it to the 1% and even many rank and file boomers who've made it comfortably to the middle class, whose success has somehow entirely eroded not just their empathy but also their critical thinking skills, leaving them convinced that they are omniscient and somehow no better than literal math. And as someone who quite legendarily pulled themselves up from absolutely nothing, it's really a shame that you've chosen to use your platform to regurgitate the propaganda your generation has been propagating for the past decade and a half, instead of using your enormous influence to call for change. Because at this point, even dyed-in-the-wool conservative pro-capitalist organizations like the American Enterprise Institute agree that the economy younger generations are having to endure is is your generation's fault, not ours.
A lot of millennials are choosing not to have children for myriad reasons, the most obvious one of which is the economy. But now another reason is surfacing. A lot of baby boomer grandparents are just not willing to help with childcare. Many millennial parents are finding that their boomer parents just aren't interested in leaning into the grandparent role, despite having leaned on their own parents to help raise their Gen X, Millennial, and Gen Z children themselves. A lot of them seem to be too busy being retired to bother with their grandkids. But that doesn't tell the entire story, because it turns out a lot of millennials baby boomer parents are unable to retire and have neither the time nor the money to help with their grandchildren. More than half of all boomers have no retirement savings to speak of, according to 2020 census data. And even among those who do, a Kiplinger study found 22%, more than one in five baby boomers, have decided to delay retirement because they're worried they don't have enough money, or because they worry the economy isn't stable enough. So even when they do want to help their kids with the grandkids, many boomers simply can't. And with so many millennials and now Gen Zers adding this to their list of reasons not to have kids, it's likely to exacerbate the decades-long trend of declining birth rates, which many economists worry will have dire economic consequences. Today's babies are tomorrow's workers, after all. And declining birth rates mean there might not be enough workers and tax dollars coming in to support governments and economies. These problems have been seized upon by those with far-right political and religious leanings, who seek to fix them by curtailing reproductive and LGBTQ rights, and calling upon women to return to so-called traditional wife roles. It should go without saying that forcing people into a certain lifestyle is not a solution, nor is, by the way, limiting immigration, which economists and other experts say is the one factor that could offset all these problems in the United States. So what is the actual solution? Well, creating a country and an economy where inadequate pay, meager taxation of corporations and the wealthy, unstable job markets, and inadequate social safety nets don't create a situation where child rearing is a dismal slog and grandparenting is financially impossible might be a start. Because if the experts' predictions hold true, we've now arrived at an absurd place where even choosing not to have children causes more problems than it solves. A woman quit her job and got starkly different reactions from boomers and Gen Zers. In a TikTok video, Samantha Shea revealed that when she brings up the fact that she's no longer employed, people over 40 go into full panic mode asking her what she's gonna do and if she's nervous and how she's gonna pay rent. Yet when she mentions her employment status to people in their 20s and early 30s, many are congratulatory and telling her they're happy for her that she's not working somewhere that no longer serves her needs. The difference in attitudes between older and younger generations when it comes to work extends way beyond Shay's observations, though. Research shows that younger generations are way more likely to leave their jobs and job hop. More than half of U.S. workers have considered leaving their jobs in 2023, and an even greater percentage of those are millennials and Gen Zers. A study found that over 70% of Gen Zers who say they're loyal to their employer are either passively or actively seeking a new job. One poll found that 40% of boomers stayed with their employers for more than 20 years, but Gen Z isn't afraid to jump ship, even if they don't have a backup plan. Gen Zers are demanding more from their employers, including comprehensive health care and mental health benefits, as well as company transparency. And there's nothing wrong with demanding more from an employer and leaving if those needs aren't met. As long as you're weighing the pros and cons of any career move, nothing should stop you from putting your mental and physical well-being above the gears of the capitalistic machine. Why do so many parents treat their children like burdens? A TikToker named Jordan recently called out Boomer and Gen X parents who seem to resent their supposedly ungrateful children. In his video, he highlighted the attitude that many older parents had, that the family house was the parents' house, not the kids, and treated their children as if they were mooching guests, even though, as Jordan put it, you're a child and have no say in the matter. I was raised this way by boomer parents who held it over my head that they let me live in their house and eat their food. As if I was some 35-year-old freeloader and not, you know, a second grader. And I agree with Jordan that this bizarre culture of resenting your kids is related to, for instance, the expectation that kids should move out at the age of 18, a uniquely American concept in which the supportive parental relationship comes to a screeching halt while the kid is still a teenager and is replaced by an expectation that children somehow now have a debt to pay to their parents for having raised them. And these parents wonder why their adult children don't talk to them anymore. As several of Jordan's commenters demonstrated, these sort of authoritarian parents often seem to think they're teaching their kids valuable lessons about respect and the value of a dollar. But making your kids feel like a mooching guest in their own home is a bizarre and cruel way to teach those kinds of lessons. And personally, I found this approach downright frightening as a child, because it contained a subtextual threat that I could be thrown out on the curb at any moment to fend for myself if I asked for anything or had a momentary lapse in behavior. Being treated like an ungrateful burden your parents can't wait to offload can make a kid feel like 
like a failure and make them feel unwanted. And that can be incredibly damaging. Take it from one who knows and has the therapy bills to prove it. And when a person awakens to how messed up that is and tries to discuss it with their parents and those parents refuse to even listen, let alone own up to it, estrangement often follows. And honestly, what do you expect when you won't even listen? You give the relationship nowhere to go. A parent's job is to love and support their kid and help them develop their brain and psyche. Not to toughen them up and teach them respect by making them feel like a burden who owes you something. Kids don't owe their parents for doing the job they chose to take on by having them. And it's not a kid's job to turn the other cheek when their parents refuse to take accountability. A woman on TikTok has an interesting analogy for the role millennials play for their boomer parents. She says they essentially act as service dogs to their parents. TikToker Crawdaddy Tina's theory basically works like this. Millennials go to therapy so that they can go back to their parents, teach them about why they're sad, and show them how to communicate and make amends before they shuffle off this mortal coil. This then frees millennials to carry on the trauma instilled in them to their own children. That's obviously a sardonic and irreverent take on the relationships many millennials have with their boomer parents. But Crawdaddy Tina's theory does hit on something really important. Generational trauma is very real, and it goes far beyond just the ways we all tend to turn into our parents to one degree or another. Science has discovered that trauma can even be passed down genetically in our DNA in a chemical process known as epigenetic trauma. But don't worry, that sounds a lot more horrifying than it actually is, because scientists have also found that therapy affects these chemical and genetic processes too. Of course, much of the reason many millennials and their boomer parents struggle to get along is that millennials are more aware of these dynamics than previous generations, and they're trying to use these skills to help their parents understand their own trauma and maybe have a chance to turn things around, with very mixed results, as all too many of us with boomer parents know. And as Crawdaddy Tina sardonically acknowledges, some of this trauma is still going to get passed on to the next generation. Nobody's a perfect parent, no matter how therapized they might be. But even if these efforts do feel an awful lot like the thankless job of service dogging your parents, the work that millennials and many Gen Zs are doing to make things better for their kids is brave and important, and worth it in the long run. Yet another clip recently went viral of someone from an older generation, this time Gen X Canadian author Rick Mercer, calling millennials and Gen Z entitled for complaining about the fact, and yes, it's a fact, that they are struggling economically more than the generations before them. And younger generations, understandably, are incensed. Like millennial TikToker Robbie Scott, for example, who responded to Mercer's hot take by pointing out that millennials and Gen Zs have held up their end of the deal. They've gone to college at unprecedented rates, many of them have had jobs since they were 16 years old. All the things the older generations generations who love to complain about them told them to do in order to be successful, and yet they can't afford basic necessities like housing and groceries at unprecedented rates. Those college degrees that Scott mentioned? Their value has been declining for years, while the unemployment rate for recent graduates is actually higher than the general population. Many baby boomers and older Gen Xers simply don't seem to understand that there is a vast wealth gap between them and the generations that came after them. The cost of everything, from housing to education, continues to rise and rise and rise, while wages have barely risen for anyone other than the richest among us. And that's before we even get into the impacts of student debt. And as for being lazy and not wanting to work, millennials and Gen Zs hold second or even third jobs at unprecedented rates. So working 40 hours a week? Yeah, they are. And then some. And in return, they're experiencing burnout really early in their lives and rapidly losing hope as things like homeownership become ever more out of reach. The bottom line? Scott put it perfectly in his TikTok. Older generations simply do not know what it's like to work your fingers to the bone and get virtually nothing nothing in return. And with all due respect, my response when I realize I don't know what I'm talking about is typically to close my mouth and open my ears to people who do. Older generations can plug their ears and deny it all they want, but it doesn't change the fact that the economy is fundamentally different for younger generations than it was for them. That is a fact. You don't have to like it, but it's still true. And the very least older generations can do is have some empathy instead of mocking and scolding the people suffering most. Are you a fellow old who finds Gen Z a little perplexing and rude? High school teacher and TikToker Miss White Bio recently shared her experiences with Gen Z and Gen Alpha, and it's left her feeling like that's more of a misconception than a reality. She laid out three examples of Gen Z etiquette that seem rude at first to us olds, but are actually signs of respect. Number one, they step away whenever you open anything on your phone or computer that might be, shall we say, 
personal. Miss White says they'll either avert their eyes or take several steps back, which seems a little rude and judgmental at first, but they're actually just giving you space in case you have some <clears throat> private photos on your phone. They're just trying to save everyone the embarrassment. Respectful. Number two, they ask permission before engaging in bad behavior. She said her students will often ask, hey, Miss White, can I cuss real quick? Crucially, they don't really listen to the answer and just do it anyway. However, this too is a sign of respect. It's sort of a warning shot that something's about to go down. And as one commenter pointed out, it kind of shows amazing emotional intelligence. And number three, if there are snacks, you gotta share them. Miss White said she doesn't think she's ever seen a Gen Z or Gen Alpha kid not share their snacks in the entire time she's been a teacher. Most of us older folks responded to the rule that you can only bring snacks if you have enough to share by just not bringing snacks at all. Gen Z seems to have turned that on its head and is determined to share no matter how little they have. As people online like to say, Gen Z is just built different. And ultimately, that's a very good thing. Gen Z is not having it with the 40-hour work week. And a content creator named Mick recently explained why, and what many young people are choosing to do instead. She says that Gen Zers aren't lazy because they want to work less than 40 hours a week. They've simply discovered that they can often make more money working for themselves in less time. And many would much rather start their own business than work for a company. A Gallup study found that 40% of workers work a standard 40-hour week, but a full 18% work a grueling 60 hours or more. And as Mick put it, it's not that Gen Z is lazy, it's just that they aren't stupid. They're very money savvy because they've always had to be and they're very good at finding ways to work for themselves. So why work 40 to 60 hours for someone else when they can make the same amount of money working for themselves in 30? Unsurprisingly, an estimated 40% of Gen Zs who do have jobs want to leave them within the next two years. And about a third said they'd even be willing to quit without having a new job lined up. And as you might guess, some of the factors fueling these trends are low pay, burnout, and the feeling that the workplace is detrimental to our mental health. We Gen Xers and Millennials have felt this way for decades, of course, but most of us have yet to do anything about it. Probably because when we were young, there was still some hope that the economy would go our way if we played our cards right. For Gen Z, on the other hand, the mask is off, and it seems to be motivating them to try to make change. That ambition to buck the status quo doesn't make them lazy. They're just trying to fix this delusional system we have of working until you simply can't work anymore.